Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you rescue us from the power of sin and death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the new Adam and source of a new humanity. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you fill us with strength and free us from fear. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side, denounce let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O oh, Lord of hosts, you who test the judge, the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Lord, in your great love, answer me. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame has covered my face. To my own kin I have become an outcast, a stranger to the children of my mother. 
zeal for your house consumes me and taunts against you fall on me. But I pray to you, O Lord, for a time of your favor. In your great mercy answer me, O God, with your salvation that never fails. Lord, answer me, for your mercy is kind. In your great compassion turn toward me. The poor, when they see it, will be glad. And God, taking hearts, will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his own in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise, the seas and everything that moves in them. Lord, in your great love, answer me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy, both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's good to be with all of you, both here in person and those who are joining us online this evening. Each day when I come into the office, like many of you, I have to take my temperature, which falls somewhere between 97.9 and a rather alarming 90.4. But I think if we were to take the temperature of our national conversation, if we can call it that, the temperature would be much, much higher. Watching the news, reading comments on social media, talking with friends and family, we can see a palpable tension that surrounds us. Faced with this reality, what are we, as people of faith, to do? I'll admit that for me, there's a temptation to retreat, to maintain my own sense of peace while hiding in the safe confines of a sort of sanctified cocoon. Let them figure it out. It's better not to get involved, not to say anything, not to worry about it. I felt this way, and then the readings slapped me in the face today. In our first reading, we hear the prophet Jeremiah describe his lot. Enemies surround him, bearing down upon him. He's attacked on all sides. He cries out to God and trusts that God alone can save him from his foes. Hearing these words, we might wonder, how did he end up in this position? Why is all of this happening to him? In short, he's there because he did what God asked him to do. He fulfilled the vocation that the Lord had for him. And what was that vocation? To be a prophet. The prophet is the one who comes not to foretell the future, but to speak the words of the Lord. And these words rarely fall on welcoming ears. Why? Because they challenge us. They challenge our way of doing things, our way of thinking about things. And these words call us to change. The words of the prophet always call us to return to the Lord. But to do that, we have to turn away from the idols that we have put in God's place. So to those who are far from the truth, who are far from the Lord, who are deeply entrenched in various forms of idolatry, these words seem to be a form of violence. They rip us from places of comfort and quiet. But God does not send us prophets because he desires violence. God sends prophets into the world to bring the world back to him, to restore us to his friendship in which we find life and peace. Those who have been in darkness do indeed find the light to be harsh. Just as to our eyes, it is painful when we move from a dark place to the brilliant light of day. But God desires us to do that, to move from darkness into light, to live in the light of his love. Prophets are not merely a thing of the past. They are very much alive today. God continues to call forth prophets. He sends strong and passionate, courageous and loving voices into the world. He raises them up from his body, the church. Now, even if we acknowledge that God might call forth prophets, we can easily think that it's something, again, for them, not for me. God is calling them to do this. But again, the readings stare us in the face. What you hear in the darkness, proclaim in the light. If the church is, as I firmly believe it is, called to be the presence of Christ in history, then each one of us has a responsibility to live up to the vocation that was given to each one of us in our baptism when we were anointed with oil as king, priest, and prophet. Every single one of us is called to exercise this role. This can scare us, scares me. 
especially when it challenges us. Now this, when we look at it in practice, is difficult. If we agree with what is being said by the church, by the prophetic voice of the church, we see it as that. It's prophetic. But if we disagree, we can dismiss it and say it's political. This is especially challenging for us as American Catholics. When our church was established in this colony, the freedom for religion was based on an idea that faith is a private matter. That faith has no real place in public life. It's something that you just keep to yourself. And as such, it's no threat to the public order. You can be a Catholic and a loyal subject to a Protestant king. You can be a Catholic and a good American. And this is how we were raised. Faith is something incredibly important. It's an important part of who we are. But if the faith is just a part of who we are, it's lost its very meaning. Our faith has to pervade every aspect of who we are. And so it can't merely remain something pushed into a corner, an aspect of our personality, but rather has to inform everything. It means everything or it means nothing. And so we have to be a prophetic voice in the midst of the world. We have to have a prophetic character that is problematic in the true sense, that it causes people to have to think and to make a choice. Now, as you might imagine, there's a way to do this well <laughs> and a way not to. I think we need look no further than our Facebook feed to see it lived out both ways. <laughs> so how do we do this? How are we a prophetic voice in the midst of the world? But how are we a good prophetic voice? I suggest three points. First, as St. Paul tells us, we ought to preach Christ and Christ crucified. St. Paul, whose name this church bears, is the model for all preaching, is the model for a faith that is not kept to oneself, but is taken to the ends of the earth. And he tells us to preach Christ and him crucified. We can be tempted to sort of dress up things as Christ, but really we're preaching ourselves in some way, our thoughts, our opinions, our words. The prophet is the one who speaks the word of the Lord, not their own words. So how do we know if we're doing this? What is our litmus test? I think we can ask ourselves this question. When was the last time I allowed myself to be challenged or made uncomfortable by something that the church proclaims to be true? When was the last time I was actually disquieted by something that the church teaches? If we live our life in, it seems, all easy, and perhaps it's because there's something that we've missed. It's very easy to fall into a pattern of being prophetic about the things that we like and the things that we agree with. But when was the last time we allowed ourselves to be challenged by something that the church teaches that we don't find easy, that we don't find readily agreeable? We have to preach Christ and him crucified and not ourselves because it is Christ who is the answer to the needs of the human heart. When I was in seminary, I encountered an ecclesial movement known as Communion and Liberation. And the name comes from a flyer that this group distributed during the 1968 student revolutions in Italy. And on the top of it were those two words, Comunione e Liberazione. And the flyer said to the students in the protest there, yes, it is good, you seek truth, you seek reform, you seek an end to corruption. All of those things are important. All of those things are necessary. But the true answer to what we desire, the true answer to the needs of the human heart, is communion, is a life lived in Christ. That life has consequences. It has consequences for how we live our lives, for how we relate to one another. But the true liberation that we receive comes from communion, comes from belonging one to another but belonging, first and foremost, to the Lord. 
The second point, if we are to be a positive prophetic voice in the world, we have to abhor ideology in any form. If there's one thing that's alien to a true prophetic voice, it is ideology. What do I mean by that? Ideology is when we replace the whole with a part. We say this one thing is the answer to everything. That comes in many, many, many forms. But in whatever form it presents itself, it's a narrowing of our reason. It's a zooming in and saying this has all the answers. And so what does it do? It blinds us to the truth, which is much, much fuller. Ideology wants to tell us that it is either this or that. The truth, more often than not, that is ushered by the prophetic voice reminds us that it is both this and that. As Catholics, we know this to be true. And it's tough for us because the totality of the truth, the truth that we have received, does not easily fit into a box. And especially does not easily fit into our two major American political parties. There are positions in each that we affirm, and there's positions in each that we abhor, or at least there should be, if we're doing it right. The last point, which I think is probably the most important point, of how we can be a positive prophetic voice in the world, is that we have to passionately love the world. We have to passionately love the world. What do I mean by that? Earlier today, I, I saw a poll that they were showing on the news, and it tracked candidates and why people voted for them. And you could either vote because you liked the one or because you hated the other. And sadly, a lot of people vote because they hate the other person more than they like the, the, the other. They, they like the one. That fascinated me. Because it showed me something. It made me ask a question. How much of what we do is motivated by love? Is motivated by a sincere love for others? And how much of it is motivated by some form of hate? How much is motivated by love and how much is motivated by hate? The prophetic voice of Dr. Martin Luther King reminded us that it is love, ultimately, that has the power. That hatred cannot be driven out by hatred. Darkness cannot be driven out by darkness. That it is only love that has the power to drive out hate. That it is only light that has the power to drive out darkness. And so how do I respond to things around me? Do I respond to them merely because I don't like this thing that somebody is saying or doing or thinking? Or do I respond because I love that person and I want them to live in the light of the truth? I want them to live in the liberating power of the truth. Now, Jesus certainly hated sin and hates sin. But Jesus is passionately in love with sinners. And so if we are going to be a prophetic voice in the world, we should hate wrong. We should hate injustice in whatever form it shows itself. But in doing that, we can't forget that we are called to model the love of Christ that hates the wrong and loves the wrongdoer. That prophetic voice has to be animated by love, by a deep, sincere, passionate love for the world and for the people in it. Why? because otherwise it's just about us, about us being right, about us being in charge or being powerful. Love has the power to transform this equation, to transform the world. We should desire people to live in the light of love and in the light of the truth. We should desire that all be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And that truth has a name, because that truth is a person, Jesus Christ.
Let's now stand as together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's provident love, we bring our prayers before him. For the church, may it be proclaimed on the housetops the good news of salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For lasting peace and justice in our world, may the power of mercy triumph in our times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who live out a call to fatherhood, may they continue to generate abundant life through their love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those afflicted with the coronavirus, for those who care for the sick, and for those experiencing hardship of any kind due to the pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Brian Weatherby, Maureen Canyon, Donna Le Leonard, Elizabeth Donut, and Kathy Baker, and Brian and Mary Beth Dia Cristofaro, Carolina Augustine McPeak, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Jonathan Romero, Donna Bushman, and Nancy Fowley, may they see the light of God's face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions which remain in the silence of our hearts, And for Don Schaefer, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, source of all goodness and life, we bring you these prayers. We ask that you hear and answer them through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If you would follow me, follow where life will lead. Do not look for me among the dead, for I am hidden in pain. Risen in love, there is no harvest without sowing of grain. All that is hidden will be made clear. All that is dark now will be revealed. What you have heard in the dark, proclaim in the light. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. If you would honor me, Honor the least of these You will not find me dressed in finery My word cries out to be heard Breaks through the world My word is on your lips and lives in your heart All that is hidden 
will be made clear. All that is dark now will be revealed. What you have heard in the dark, proclaim in the light. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice in your hands, for your praise and glory in his name, for our good and of all the holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make an offering of the heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, as when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of, the, of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ, that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done 
that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Paul and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We can acknowledge each other without physical contact. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Those who were in the dark are thankful for the sunlight. We who live, we who die are thankful for this gift. Thankful for God's love. Behold, behold the shall live and all all who dwell in God shall come to know God's glory peaceful now those whose hearts are blessed with understanding of the wheat of the wine united with God's word and the love we share behold behold the Lamb of God drink shall live, and all, all who dwell in God shall come to know 
God's glory. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just uh, one announcement. Uh, as was announced last week, uh, Father Ray will begin his retirement uh, on July 1st, and so there are baskets uh, at week. next week. There are baskets. Thank you, Deacon George. Uh, next week there are baskets uh, for anybody who would like to... Uh, for a card or a message uh, for Father Ray uh, to thank him for all of his great service, which will continue as he is not uh, leaving us entirely, but as he begins uh, this new phase of his priestly life. So thank you all for being here, both those in person and those joining us uh, online. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. God of Adam, God of Joseph, God of sowing soil and seed, thank you for your world of promise, milk and honey, wine and bread. God, you make us your companions, sharers of your loving cup. Thank you for the generations, weave of names and threads of hope. God of Adam, God of Joseph, God of sowing soil and seed. Thank you for your world of promise, milk and honey, wine and bread. May your passion for creation be reflected in our own. For our role in birth and nurture, make through us your presence known. God of Adam, God of Joseph, God of sowing soil and seed, Thank you for your world of promise, milk and honey, wine and bread. Thank you for all men entrusted with the charge of fatherhood. And for those who have no children, yet are parents under God. God of Adam, God of Joseph, God of sowing soil and seed, thank you for your world of promise, milk and honey, wine and